Welcome back to another episode of the Youth Academy Career Mode here with Wakefield where we are in the Premier League and we're towards the latter end of the first season into the Premier League. We have nine games left to go. We have three big six clubs and two of those being our last two games of the season. We currently sit in 15th. We are four points clear at the bottom of the table for Crystal Palace who sit on 28 points in Arsenal. They finally rebound, and I think they are fully safe now as well after their really like mid-season struggles. At the top of the table, we have Tottenham, one of the clubs we'll play, Liverpool, one of the clubs we'll play, and then Man United, one of the clubs we'll play. We already beat Man United once this season. We might be able to beat them again. We do have Bournemouth, who are currently bottom of the table to kick things off. As far as our objectives, we obviously complete the first one being the Big Six. We are currently 15th in the league, so we are surviving relegation. We have 36 out of 40 for this Laird and not Laird, the Jacobs and Weber goal contributions. We're in the quarterfinals. We already did that. We have two clean sheets now. We got one last episode. And then for the Fagan and no, for the Laird and Steel objective, we are 27 out of 35. Now that one has been pretty much Laird by himself. We are actually going to go ahead and simulate through this game because honestly, I just we should just be able to walk right past Bournemouth. But if need be, I will jump in, but I don't think we really have to. Half time, well, we're nil nil. We might be jumping in if it's still nil nil towards the 60th, the 70th minute mark. Just to try and put it over the edge. And they take the lead. It's 1 nil. We're jumping in. We got 35 minutes to turn turn this completely around and score two goals. So again here, I cannot accept the loss score. against Bournemouth. They're literally bottom of the table for a re Young. Young, out wide. Now in for Weber. I almost said Hoffman because it literally looks like Hoffman. How is this team not good enough to be a bottom of, bottom of the league Bournemouth? We lose 1-0. And we're right back into the relegation zone where we could have easily put ourselves out of the relegation zone with that win. Crystal Palace win as well, so they are now only one point behind us. We are one point ahead of Crystal Palace and one point ahead of Leeds United who currently have a game in hand. We could easily climb up towards the towards top 14, top 13. Or we can easily get in relegate or put in a relegation zone as well. Where is 16th? How many or 19th? How many points do they have? 26. We literally gave Bournemouth their third one of the season. That's just diabolical. That's insane. 35. We could jump all the way up to 12th with this game in hand. With this game win in hand. We have Southampton up next. Who do we have after that? I think it's Liverpool, right? No, it's Austin Villa, Leicester, then Liverpool. I'm not going to play Liverpool because that's honestly an automatic L. So we got to win at least two of these games in the Southampton, Villa, or Leicester game. All of them are our home games it's looking like. Let's get into it. Let's see what we can do. This team is going to be put through the ringer for the next couple of episodes. Kokuchu? Is that the Turkish Kokuchu? Whatever his name is. The midfielder that I just seen. Fisher, the club captain. He's not very happy right now. He's honestly already looking on his way out. Harrison Steele actually wants his way out. And Dolberg wants his way into our back of the net. Evan stops it. Harrison Steele, he's not really getting game time. He wants to be on his way out. We might be able to cash out massively for him. The most insane youth academy player we've ever found had to be a glitch. And McGovern might be able to head it out. He does, but it's only as well to Fabian Diaz. Now Millennial. Pascal and for Struik, and for Lookman, Evans with another save. Keeping his clean sheet alive early in the game. Yeah. Malaria. Now Donso, Dolberg, clean sheet gone. Southampton in front. Katit wins the ball back. Jacobs and Laird is gone. Out for the rest of the game and more than likely out for the rest of the season. And his stock is going to go massively down as well. Especially if it's an ACL in which he's out for seven, six to seven months. Well, he'll be out for a good portion of next season, early season as well. Steele will take his spot. Maybe this might be a perfect time for Steele to become happy at the club. Yeah, Laird right there. That's just not good. He's out. Steele has a lot of game time in his future. 
Don't go up 2-0, please. Dolberg, they do go up 2-0. Southampton, Dolberg, 2-0. Southampton right at the halftime mark. Oh, boy, we might be really in a relegation battle now. We still have... Oh, no. This is not good. This is not good at all. Young starting off the half by just taking him, doing it by himself. Nobody's there to support him. Weber is there late now. Weber on his left foot. He'll get blocked, and that will come to nothing. Kind of the theme of the game, theme of the episode so far. Steele, Young, Jacobs, Fisher, maybe. Yes, Fisher. Fisher's going to take himself. That's saved as well. Out for the corner. McGovern will take the corner. Weber is there. Acuna is there. It will fall for Steele, of all people. He'll get it out wide for McGovern. McGovern in now for Jacobs. First time finish. It had to be. And it finds the back. And it's 2-1. Enough time to get a result from this game. This is one of the games we might have to accept the draw. And the ball is moving if again. It's obviously possible. Steele has splitting the defense. And Steele's in behind. And Steele has levelers. 2-2. Two -two. We somehow walked out of the stadium with a point after that absolutely abomination of a game. I didn't want to point out of the Southampton game, but it's looking like we might actually get a point. We're going to have to accept it. And Harrison Steele coming off for the injured Laird does the job. He has a straight splitting defense to run straight into, finding the back post. Right at the end of the game almost. We might, maybe, depending on how much time is added, it's not enough time to really get the ball back, but it might be enough time for Southampton to go and get a win. Young stops the first one, but here comes the second wave. The referee doesn't allow it to play out. It's a 2-2 draw here against Southampton. We're going to have to accept it. Now I'm just wondering how long is Laird out. He's obviously going to be out for the rest of the season, but is it ACL where he's out for six to seven months and out for almost a good chunk of the beginning of next season? He's only out for two months where he dislocated his shoulder. He was holding his knee, but the game thinks it's his shoulder. So he's actually only out for two months. That is massive news. He will not be out for six to seven months like I thought he would be. He will be good enough. He will be back in time for really, I guess, preseason, even though we're not going to do preseason. That draw actually takes up uh, us to, up to 15th. Leeds United now in 19th and 18th. Brighton, obviously, in 19th. Bournemouth are in 20th, going down automatically already. We are in 15th. We are one point clear off of Crystal Palace. Now, Nottingham Forest do have a the game in hand against us so they could go straight back over us if they beat their player who do they play not even for us they have Leicester they have Leicester Crystal Palace have Fulham where's Fulham 14th that could be another loss for Fulham or for Crystal Palace as well but even though that could be a draw as well hopefully it is a draw to be honest and not even for us do not win their game in hand so we are sitting in 15th that is perfect. We are two points clear off the bottom of the table. Leeds United with the game in hand as well. So we can make it five on even. It's a perfect chance to try and do something. But Austin Villa are a decent team. They have nine points ahead. They're nine points clear off of us. We do got to put Steele into the starting 11 for Laird. Do I have anybody on here? I don't. I mean, Joan. No, John. Joan. John's going to be there. Okay. John will be our replacement. We don't really have a winger anymore. Let's get into this game against Austin Villa. Let's see if we can somehow maybe scam a win. And Austin Villa at home once again. This time. I mean, I say it has to be a win, but Austin Villa is ahead of us by nine points. But it really does have to be a win. McGovern. Jacobs. Jacobs in for Weber, Weber touch, Weber shot, Weber goals, Wakefield leads, it's 1-0 for Wakefield, and Weber is the man that put it into the back of the net, and now my whole defense is going to be shifted out of position, 
And it might be an easy opportunity for Austin Villa to get back in this game. Alenga is there, and Alenga will get back in the game. Clean sheet gone, lead gone. 1-1. One, one. Evans, earliest cross into the box, and I will never do that again. Acuna should win the header, it'll fall to Moriano. Moriano in for Jacobs. Jacobs will lay it off for McGovern. McGovern has Fisher making a run. Fisher first time finished off the post. He'll get his own rebound. And it's 2 1. We retake the lead. In which we are two points clear off of them at that. Here's Steele. Steele now. Steele on his left foot. Steele makes it 3 1. Straight off kickoff into the second half. It's 3 1 against Villa. And Steele, he has some big shoes to fill in when replacing Laird for the rest of this season in two goals in two games. Well, really, two and a half games, one and a half games. And honestly, that's a beautiful goal. We might have to be forcing to play Steele a lot more now. Skamaka! It's a beautiful goal. They're right back into it. It's 3 2. Skamaka scores it. The great goal in all honesty. And it's 3-2, Austin Villa are only down by one now. Look at this. It's a good touch right here. Get it up in the air. Nobody's closing him down. Keeper really no shot at saving that at all. Skamaka on the free kick in towards the box. Steele is there to head it out. Pinto is there to carry it out with Neil. He'll send Pinto just down the middle of the field. Pinto, do you have enough strength on you to defend these guys? And Pinto for the win to seal the deal. Neil or Pinto will do it. And that's three points against a decent side in Austin Villa. And that win right there might put us into a big safety mark for the season. Escaping relegation, hopefully. But for right now, Pinto gets the job done. For he shouldn't, he won't. We win against Austin Villa. No clean sheet again. But honestly, at that point, I don't really care. We get the win. We get what we needed. We walk out of the home stadium with three points, allowing ourselves a little bit more freedom against Liverpool, Man United, and Tottenham. Well, we're picking but more importantly, we're coming in with great confidence coming into the midweek game against Leicester City. Four points clear off of bottom of the well, I keep saying bottom of the table. Four points clear off of 18th Crystal Palace. They went ahead and actually lost the game against Fulham. Leeds United drew as well, so we are four points off of them or clear off of them with the game in hand against them. So we could go seven points clear off of Leeds United. We could go seven or what? Yeah, seven points clear off of Crystal Palace. Obviously, if they lose and we win. However, we are playing Leicester City, who are currently sitting seventh with 50 points. That is going to be tough. Arsenal in 12th. We are going to go ahead and simulate through this. And honestly, I expect a loss. I, I can't lie. I really do expect a loss. So that Austin Villa win was absolutely massive. That even draw against Bournemouth was unacceptable. But it's reasonable at as we speak right now. We are just hoping not to get completely dominated here. In four minutes in, we're already down 1-0 to Leicester City. Weber equalizes in the 22nd minute to 1 1. And Mukoko gets his brace and put Leicester City back in front. It's 2 1 now. And Kessie might have just sealed the deal for Leicester City. It's 3 1. Weber gets his brace and gets one back as well. It's 3 2. 71 minutes in. 19 minutes left to. Go ahead and, and try and grab an equalizer. If we can draw this game against Leicester City, I should probably jump in and try and play it, but I'm going to let the game run out. But if we can draw this game, that'd be insane. And never mind. Guendouzi might have just sealed the deal officially this time. We lose to Leicester City, and now we have Liverpool up next. We are actually somehow in 15th. We are three points clear off of Nottingham Forest. Four points clear off of Leeds United. Everybody on the same exact game time. Same games played. Five games left to go. Spurs are currently sitting in first. Liverpool are in third. And looking like this, we obviously play Spurs. We obviously play Liverpool right now. We also play Man United. They look like the most winnable out of the last three big six that we play for the rest of this season they are currently sitting in six obviously we did just play against leicester city i don't know why that showed up 
We are going to go ahead and quit some this game against Liverpool. I expect nothing but an L. 4-1 loss. 4-2 loss. A 1-0 win. All right, we are four points clear off of Wake, off of Wakefield, off of Leeds United, who currently stay in 18th after that loss against Leicester City. We have Liverpool up next. We are obviously in quick in that and more than likely lose that, who are currently fighting, trying to fight for a Premier League title. They are five points behind Tottenham. They're going to need something massive from Tottenham to happen. We are going to go ahead and quicks in this game against Liverpool. I expect a loss. I hope for a win or something. We win 4-2. What? How do we beat Liverpool 4-2? Jacobs, Weber, Weber, and Steele. What is happening? Cut that out again. And with five games left to go, we are four points clear off of Leeds United. We are pretty much safe at the moment, and honestly, we might be, be staying safe as well. We do have Liverpool, though, up next, in which I expect to lose. I expect to fully lose this game here at Anfield, and you know what? We put up a hell of a fight, losing 4-3. Kulovesky had to score the winner in the 76th minute after we equalized to make it 3-3 in the 73rd. Steel on the score sheet. John started. Why did John start? John started. John played. It's a 4-3 loss. John with a brace and steal on the score sheet as well. Why and how did John start? And so we have four games left to go in the season. This is obviously going to be the end of this episode as we speak. Four games left to go for next episode to wrap up the season in which we kick it off with a game against Leeds United. Leeds United actually have some very important games up. They have us and then they have Crystal Palace as well as two of the last four games. We are three points clear off of them still. They could go ahead and win and put us into a relegation scrap. Nottingham Forest is struggling as well. Crystal Palace kind of are bouncing back there. Five points clear off of off of Leeds United right now so that's interesting as well we gotta beat Leeds surely we gotta beat Leeds Man City go ahead and take top spot in the league Liverpool in second Spurs they crumble but they actually maybe they don't crumble because they have two games in hand against Liverpool and City so maybe they don't crumble yet but we have Leeds United we also have obviously Man United and Tottenham but we also have Fulham in the league as well to end things off. I will see y'all for next episode for the season finale. It's a relegation scratch with Fulham and Leeds and then it's automatic losses with Man United and Tottenham. But until then, leave a like, subscribe, and peace out.